welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. Some parents whose adult children become estranged from them feel like there's something humiliating about being in that position. And in keeping with the definition of the word humiliated, they feel a loss of pride, of self-respect, and even their sense of dignity can be shaken. Feeling humiliated is a terrible experience that we typically try to avoid in life because it taps into the shame that most of us secretly carry around with us all the time. So when I counsel some parents to consider adopting an attitude of humility in dealing with their estranged adult children, they feel torn. On the one hand, they instinctively know that humility is an attractive quality. It's attractive in the sense that it's on the opposite end of the spectrum from other very unattractive attitudes. These parents know their adult child is likely to respond better to humility than anything that might come across as pride, outrage, or entitlement. And especially if parents have perceived those very attitudes in their children, they know how easily the opposite of humility can alienate people. So they may want to try to embrace humility, but humility can feel uncomfortably close to humiliation. And some parents feel much too vulnerable to embrace something that feels so demeaning in some way. This is a real dilemma, because humility, despite its humble connotations, is in practice an incredibly powerful approach. Because it is so attractive, humility can quickly melt hostility and disarm any defensive attacks. Sometimes it's the only stance that can open a door that would otherwise stay shut. Let's talk about what makes humility so powerful, and then I'll suggest some ways to try to decouple humility from humiliation. Imagine three different scenarios in which a neighbor comes over to your house to borrow a cup of sugar. Kind of old-fashioned, I know, but I think it's going to be a fitting analogy. The first neighbor knocks hard on your door, seems annoyed at how long it took you to answer it, and then when you do, she thrusts a cup into your hands and says, I want to do some baking, and the recipe calls for a cup of sugar, so I need a cup. Why don't you be a good neighbor and fill this for me? Well, you're so rattled by her attitude that you don't know what else to do but go get her a cup of sugar. But when you hand it to her, she looks kind of disappointed and says, this is barely full. Can I get some more? And, you know, at this point, you might want to say, I'm sorry, that's all I've got. Because at this point, her attitude is annoying. So she walks away in a huff with the cup of sugar that you gave her. That's the first scenario. Now let's say a second neighbor knocks on your door, and when you open it, he says, Hi, I'm doing some baking, and the recipe calls for a cup of sugar, but I don't have that, so can I borrow a cup of sugar from you? So you go get another cup of sugar, and the neighbor says, Thanks, and walks away. So that's the second neighbor. A third neighbor now knocks on your door, and you might wonder if there's a baking competition in the neighborhood, because when you open it, He gives you a smile. I'm really sorry to bother you, he says. I was planning on doing some baking, but I found that I don't have enough sugar. I hate to ask, but I wonder if you might be able to help me out. The recipe calls for one cup, but really anything you can spare, I would really appreciate. So you go to get him the last of your sugar, but you find that you only have about a teaspoon left because you gave most of it to the first two neighbors. When you offer this neighbor the teaspoon of sugar with apologies, he says, No, 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 this is wonderful. I can easily make do with this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And he goes back to his house with a friendly wave. Now, I ask you, which neighbor do you most want to keep some sugar on hand for in the future? 
The first neighbor was arrogant and entitled. If you regret giving her any sugar, you're probably not alone. The second neighbor was polite, but otherwise not very engaging. The third neighbor expressed humility in at least four different ways. First, he treated you as important. Remember, he said, I'm sorry to bother you. Second, he addressed you with respect and courtesy throughout the interaction. Third, he expressed a complete lack of entitlement to any of your time, let alone your sugar. And fourth, he showed gratitude for what he received, even though it was far less than he needed. Those are all aspects of humility ranking yourself a little lower than the person you're addressing, speaking respectfully and with courtesy, forfeiting any notion of being entitled to someone else's time or resources, and being grateful for any and all offerings, no matter how small. In treating you this way, your humble neighbor probably made a more favorable impression on you than the other two did. He won you over not in spite of his humility, but because of it. You see how powerful humility can be in relationships. It can evoke goodwill and a spirit of generosity in other people. If you're unwillingly estranged from your adult child, how can you authentically embrace this paradoxically powerful humility without feeling humiliated in the process? Well, let me point out three aspects of humility that I hope will underline some of the important differences between humility and humiliation. First, humility is an attitude that you can consciously take on, whereas humiliation is a feeling that kind of takes you over. When we feel humiliated, we're not at our best And we may even push other people away out of a sense of shame and wanting to hide. But an attitude of humility invites others to stay close to us. With humility, others don't feel like they need to defend themselves or as though we expect something they might not be ready to offer. So humility is an attitude leading to pro-social behavior, whereas humiliation is a feeling that makes us quite antisocial. Second, humility being an attitude and not a feeling means it's a choice we can make. And as soon as we make a choice, we claim power. That's true in any situation. When we make choices, we reclaim our power. Choosing humility is a powerful act simply because we are choosing it. When we're modest about our status, no one can put us down. We become powerful by giving away the trappings of power on purpose. And that brings us to number three. Humility is a stance adopted by the powerful, not the powerless. Only people with a lot to offer have anything to be humble about. So acting humble can actually make us feel bigger rather than smaller whereas humiliation targets the smallest, weakest, most ashamed parts of us. If humility feels to you exactly like being humiliated, please also listen to episode number 39, in which I talked about your self-esteem and estrangement. Injured self-esteem will make it hard to embrace humility on purpose. But if you're ready to embrace an approach of humility in dealing with your estranged adult child or children, just remember the third neighbor and the way he asked for that cup of sugar. Walking away with far less than what he asked for, did that neighbor feel humiliated? I sure hope not. You gave your humble neighbor all that you were able to give at that time and place. His humility may not have gotten him the sugar he wanted, but you just didn't have it to give. But he did leave you with such a nice warm feeling that just maybe the next time he comes around, you'll have stocked up on your baking supplies. Here again are the four ways to express humility the way the neighbor did. First, 
Treat your child as if she and her time are important. Second, always speak to and about your child with respect and courtesy. Third, forfeit any notion that your child owes you anything. And fourth, express gratitude for anything your child offers, even if it's less than you'd hoped for. My message in this episode has been that humility is not the same as humiliation. Instead of being a rotten experience that makes you feel small and powerless and disrespected, humility is a powerful choice. When embraced wholeheartedly and authentically, humility can attract goodwill and generosity in others, including, I hope, your currently estranged adult child or children. And if you're not quite ready to embrace humility in this situation, or it just doesn't feel right, there's no need to judge yourself for that. Just notice where you are, and let it be okay to be where you are right now. Keep pursuing the personal healing and growth that we often talk about, both inside the Reconnection Club and on this podcast. Get therapy if you feel you could use it, and if you give yourself kind, consistent attention and time to heal, then one of these days, you may find yourself practicing humility without the slightest feeling of humiliation. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, The Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, The Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.